Here they are, the Home Depot starting pass for Colorado State. Matt Newton is the quarterback approaching a 2,000-yard season. McDougal looks for 1,000 on the ground tonight. The wide receiver is Dallas Davis, a special team stud. Frank Rice, three touchdowns in the last game for Colorado State. The offensive line is big. Sapahia on the weak tackle spot for Vansky in the middle. Two of the strengths. Opening drive for CSU from its own 20-yard line. McDougal the lone back. Newton will go to the air right away. He intended for Dallas Davis and hit the ground and goes incomplete. Air Force on defense. Pretty good. Tough to score on. Tops in this conference defensively. Thomas, Spolsky, and Sakura up front. Guy to watch in the linebacking course, 41. Craig Forstenson, after missing a couple of games, he's back in the lineup. Travis Meidinger, the outside linebacker, a good one as well. Sean Smog has an interception. He's one of the cornerbacks, along with Jones, Jackson, and Metters are the safeties. It's a team secondary. No individual superstars for Air Force. Second and ten. It's Newton back to the air. He'll dunk to the tight end, Ochoa. Jose Ochoa gains seven to the 27. Tony Jones pulled him down. We see quarterback Matt Newton now. This is our third time seeing him play. Each time out, he, he's appeared to get better and better and playing with more confidence. Talking with Steve Fairchild, the offensive coordinator, they're very happy with what he's been able to do. As you can see the completion percentage getting up, up to close to 60%. I like the call because it was a fake to McDougal, and they came out with a nice bootleg, nice safe play. It'll be third and three, needing to get to the 30-yard line for the first down. You see the first and ten line in. Uh, try a reverse with Pete Redstock, the wide receiver, but Air Force disciplined as always. Corey Nelson helped make the play. Quickly a punt for Colorado State. So a nice opening drive job done by the Air Force defense. And Dion Horenic comes in an outstanding net punter. He's had a very, very good year. Colorado State's fifth in the country in net punting, but again, he will be punting into this 25 mile per hour win. Good rush on Horenic, and he got it away. Scott McKay will take it at the 22 on a knee, took a hit. That will be a flag on Colorado State's Jay Charlon Jones. A 55-yard punt. Jay Charlon hit the man while he had a knee on the ground. So that one's a little different than the halo rule that I like so much. <laughs> I wasn't even going to bring it up. I tell you what, I cannot believe that he kicked the ball 55 yards against this kind of a win. Yep. Mark it down. That's National Football League style right there. It's one of the best punters in the country. Right. Also, one of the best at pinning opponents deep in their own territory. Senior out of Atwood, Kansas. Dead ball. First of foul. Late hit on the kickers. 15 yards from the end of the run. Automatic first down. So that'll give Air Force nice field position for Mike Thiessen, the quarterback that Kirk talked about earlier. The three backs, they'll see three fullbacks in there along with Rillos and McKay, the halfbacks. <laughs> Receiving court, Matt Farmer on the career top five list for Air Force offensively. He can really get out and make deep catches. So with the penalty, the drive will start from the 38. And the first toss of the game goes to Rillos. Matt, the senior out of Golden, Colorado, with a gain of about four or five. That offensive line, Matt Dayock is a junior. Hildebrand, the other guard right next to Dayock, is a junior as well. The other three players are seniors. Norman. Charters, Roberts, four Texans, with four Texans backing them up as well. So Texas has produced some fine offensive linemen for Air Force. Second and six for the junior out of Modesto, California, Mike Thiessen. The fullback is Tom Heyer, who got stopped by that Colorado State defense. To Atelli, the linebacker led the charge. Mike McKenzie's on the bottom of the pile. He's along with Greg Pollard, Jamie Bennett, and Clark Hagans, the all-time sack leader at Colorado State that Jerry told you about. 42, the linebacker in the middle, Tuatele, Tuatele has two freshmen on either side of him. And in the secondary, important night for the safeties. 28, Eric Olson, 38, John Howell, whose wife 
is expecting to give birth at any moment. Add to the subplots here tonight. It's a good thing we have Dr. Jerry Punch on the sideline, right? As he's in the stands, what did he tell us? 198 deliveries? Doc has delivered 198. Ready at a moment's notice. Needing to get to the 48 for a first down. Wind at their backs. Oh, big opening for the first down for a higher. Eric Olson and Tuatelli pulled him down, but too late. First down for Air Force. Actually, it was Nathan Beer. Check that, the fullback. Run the fullback here and talking to Larry Kerr, the defensive coordinator for Colorado State. He said the first thing we have to do is take the fullback out of the game. If you look at the triple option, you look at option attacks, it starts with the fullback. If, if, if Air Force can establish the fullback, it could be a long night for Colorado State. It's Matt Rillos this time. The halfback gets out on the edge. Terrence Gibson contributing to the hit with Tuatelli. So you see the fullback, the halfback, haven't seen the quarterback keep it yet, but they have been very balanced offensively in what they've been doing. Larry Kerr, the defensive coordinator, doesn't have one player necessarily to stop. Kirk, that's great balance in this offense. Well, they mix it up. That's one of the things over the years with Fisher DeBerry here at DeHelm. You're going to see them try to establish the fullback early, but they like to get the quarterback on the corner. And that's the one thing that we've seen with Mike Thiessen throughout this season when he's had his opportunities is he's looking to keep the ball in the option right away. And when you look at the great option quarterbacks over the years, those are the ones that are dynamic. They look to keep, they force that defense to make it pitch it to the outside, and you'll see that tonight. This, this quarterback is very aggressive. Well, Fisher told us at 6 foot 195, Thiessen is really a running back disguised in the quarterback position. And that's why he likes him better running the football than Cale Bonds, the kid that started before. It was a first down for Thiessen. We're at the 37. A keeper this time. A good stick after about four yards. Justin Gallimore made the tackle. Well, the fishbone, Fisher DeBerry's version of the wishbone offense in the last few years, took off in the true wishbone form. DeBerry's arrival back 1984, 326 and a half yards they ran for. Very impressive. But look, they were number two in the nation, running for 386 yards in 87. They're number one in the nation now at 291 yards, about what 90 plus 95 yards less the reason that is is the west coast pass offense is now the thing to do that and also the defenses everybody's putting eight and nine people up in the box you have to throw you can't just run second and six the fullback nathan beard with the carry here from grand junction colorado a lot of colorado players in this game and there is fisher in his 16th year the winningest coach in academy history hoping to take air force to an 11th bowl in his tenure one thing about Fisher DeBerry, he beat one of the greatest coaches of all time's record, Earl Red Bank, Blake and Army, 121 wins. That says it all right there. When you beat Earl Red Blake, you're some kind of football coach. The winningest coach ever at any of the service academies. Red Blake and Army had it until DeBerry reached 126 with the victory over Washington earlier this year. Third and a couple. Scotty McKay tried to turn the corner, but was brought down by John Howe. That's the one we told you whose wife is expecting at any moment. He delivered on third down. Third and short there. Colorado State deciding to get the safeties up very close to the line of scrimmage. Almost a 4-4 look. And there, there was nobody there to pick up. John Howe is able to come up and make the play short of the first. With the wind at their back, they'll try the 47-yard field goal with Jackson Whiting. Now, Whiting is usually the one who tries the shorter kicks, but with the wind at his back, 47 should be attainable. Career long is 44. Flags down. Whiting had the length, but obviously would have missed, and he hasn't missed a field goal this year. This one didn't count as an attempt. Dead ball, false start. Offense, five yard penalty, remains fourth down. Now let's see if DeBerry uses his longer place kicker, David Adams. Well, that, that had the distance from 65 or 70. Mm -hmm. He killed that with that win. You know, one of the things that always bothered me as a coach is not the win behind the kicker, but the win with the center snapping the ball. The center is snapping the ball against the win and has a tendency to flutter a little bit. Now, here's the interesting thing. One's a lefty, one's a righty. 
So the holder has to spin around to the other side for the David Adams field goal. Keep your eye on the center snap and see if it doesn't wobble a little bit against that wind. Matt Rillos will hold now on the other side of the world. This will be a 51 yard field goal attempt. Never got the laces turned around as you saw, but it didn't matter. They'll credit him officially with a 52 yard field goal for the junior out of Fort Lauderdale, David Adams. His long of this year was 49. Mark him down for 52. And Air Force with the wind at its back strikes first. Back in Fort Collins, Air Force scores first, a 3 0 lead on this windy night. North of Denver, Fisher DeBerry's team, a short drive in terms of yardage, but the long field goal from the strong legged David Adams. Who blasts another kickoff to the back of the end zone for a touchback. Our CSU offense will take over at the 20. Here's Dr. Jerry Punch. Guys, Air Force senior inside linebacker Craig Thorson was listed as doubtful last night in playing this football game because of a strained left adductor muscle against BYU. That is until they took delivery of this device last night at the hotel. A prototype hip brace. Basically, this brace, a rubberized neoprene girdle that he slips on. It has a belt buckle or a seat belt, if you will. They pull across the front of that to give it support, and they wrap him with another Velcro wrap across that leg to keep it in position. McDougal running for four yards to the 24. Jerry, so will that help prevent further aggravating the injury? Well, it's it's not been used that much in sports, and that, that's what he's wearing now. I'm told that Yamir Yager wore that in the uh, Stanley Cup playoffs last year, and it worked very, very well for the same kind of injury. Now, he's okay running straight ahead, but when he tries to, to go left, or particularly to his right, when he tries to open his hips up and go to his right, he's going to have some discomfort. That will provide some degree, though, of support. We'll watch for that. Jerry did a very nice job modeling that as well. <laughs> Any holiday help at QVC, Jerry available at a moment's Where's notice. Where's Bob Parker? <laughs> Second and six, no room for McDougal at the end. He is stopped up. Good play by Charlie Jackson to finish him off after Matt Palmer, 52, from Boulder, Colorado, made the hit. This is what Dr. Punch was talking about here. Thorsten, Thorstenson doesn't look very quick getting to the outside. Not only have to take on a blocker, but also fighting that pain and that in the what was the uh, conductor. Yeah, I thought you had it. Oh, you forget about it. <laughs> that looked like one of my old bathing suits that I used to wear. To Jerry's was showing up. You know the kind of yes, I do. Sure, yeah. sure. You and Bert out there hanging out. One of the things that's interesting now, but you can tell off offensively right now what. Colorado Straight is trying to do is get the ball and bounce outside and I promise you that's not good against an academy team that can run as well as these guys can. Well injury for Colorado State Sonny Lubick looks on concerned will check out the injury after this timeout halfway through the opening quarter Air Force on top. Well unfortunately the injured player is still down it's Corey Wolston Hume one of the tight ends for Colorado State. Jerry Punch can tell us what's going on. Right side of your screen, 86, that is Wolston Hume. As you watch him trying to block there, circling on the right side of your screen. Now watch him. He will be hit with his neck and head down as he tries to hold off one of the Air Force defenders. Now he hit the ground and immediately rolled over. Now Fred Oglesby, who is the Air Force, I mean the Colorado State head trainer, is there with the young man, Corey Wolston Hume, as well as the, uh, the uh, Colorado State Orthopedic. There is Fred Oglesby there. They have gone to the ambulance in the end zone, and uh, they're going to bring a stretcher out. Now, what he said as he came by a moment ago is uh, he's complaining of some neck discomfort and some neck pain, so they're not going to take any chances. You see Sonny Lubick has walked over there to watch uh, the physicians now work uh, with Corey. He is awake and alert. He's just laying about five or six feet from where we're standing and able to talk to the physicians. He is not unconscious. There has been no loss of consciousness, but they're not going to take any chances, and I uh, applaud them for that. They're going to bring a stretcher out and uh, be able to put a brace around his neck, put him on a stretcher, and take him down for x-rays. Once again, tight end, halfback, Corey Wolstenhume, the injured player. Mike? Jerry, former junior college All-America at Rick's Junior College in Idaho. So as they look at the uh, H-back, who's tight end size, really, and does the same type of things as a tight end does in their offense, but is classified an H-back in the uh, one-back Colorado State set. We talked so much about Wolstenhume earlier this season, the first time we saw Colorado State 
when they played against BYU. Very good friends with Rob Morris, BYU's outstanding linebacker. They were very good friends at childhood. So everyone on the Colorado State sidelines looks on with concern. They've seen their uh, share of injuries this year, but certainly this is more serious. Rick Kroll, their outstanding linebacker, had a rotator cuff injury. He's out. One of the seniors here on senior night, hoping to enjoy the festivities, but certainly that uh, has been muted for the moment with this injury. Let's go back down to Jerry. Guys, Sonny Lubick has been over talking to his young tight end and has gone over to his players to tell him that he is a, tell them that he is awake and alert. Obviously, a lot of concern down here on the Colorado State sidelines. As you take a look at the replay once again, now, most people tell you that it's very important to keep your head up, and they always say heads up, heads up whenever you're blocking or making a tackle because if your head goes down, then your neck is more subject to being injury. See, his, actually, his head, his helmet got pushed down by the defender. He had his head up. But as the defender came along, his head came down, and that's probably why they had the concern, and that's why he was complaining of some pain in the base of his neck. Now, they have him out there. The uh, Fred Oglesby there with uh, Sonny Lubick and the Colorado State team getting ready very, very carefully. Here again, time is not important. They take as much time as they need to put a brace around him and pick him up, put him on the stretcher, take him to the ambulance, and get him x-rayed. All right, Jerry. So while they take their time as much as they want to to Best care for Corey Wollstenhume, the H-back, will step out for a moment. Rivalry and rivalry weekend continues what's become an ESPN tradition. Late in November, Alabama-Auburn, the Iron Bowl, and the Plains of Alabama. That comes up Saturday here on ESPN. We apologize for some audio glitches on this very windy night here in Fort Collins. We have that all straightened out. As you see, Corey Wollstenhume, who has suffered a neck injury of some sort. And the medical staff has taken as much time as needed to take the best care of Wollstenhume. And certainly he'll go off to the X-ray. And we can only hope and pray that Corey is okay. As Sonny Lubick was telling his players, and Jerry Punch reported, alert and conscious. Just out there blocking the H-back. Always one of the toughest things to deal with in football for everyone. Fans, and players, and coaches. Hard to go on and carry on like everything is normal after the next play. But what you can do is pray that everything is okay with Wollstone here. From a player's perspective, it's it's very tough because it's your thoughts and, and, your, and your concerns are with your, your your buddy and your teammate. And on the other hand, you still have three and a half quarters of, of football to still try to go out and, and try to take care of business. So that is, uh, I think, a lot of players that have played the game have been in that, that predicament. And, and the, t the toughest thing to do is try to try to block that out and play the game. Jerry, go ahead. Guys, I'm down on the uh, Colorado State sideline with the orthopedic surgeon, Dr. Rocky Trumper. And Dr. Trumper, give us uh, uh, your evaluation thus far on Corey. Well, Corey has a uh, neck injury. He's got some numbness in his left arm, so we're going to take him in for some precautionary x-rays. So, but he was awake and alert and talking to you. He's awake and alert and doesn't have a head injury at all. Um, his biggest problem is his neck pain and his numbness in his left arm. Okay, we'll look forward to hearing back from me. Thanks, Doc. Thanks. Rocky Trump for giving us the good news. The numbness localized only to the left upper arm. No legs, no right side at all. They'll get an x-ray. They're going to let us know as soon as they get something back on Corey Wolston here. Mike? Okay, Jerry, thank you. That's wonderful news. We hope it continues in the same vein. Corey is married. I'm sure his uh, wife, if she's not here in the stands, is watching with concern and as are all his players. Our th thoughts are with Corey, and as soon as we find out anything from the Colorado State folks, we'll pass it along. The play he was injured on was a run by Kevin McDougal that picked up a couple. It sets up third and five for the Rams as we get back underway. The quarterback, Matt Newton, to throw, and it is caught by Dallas Davis, who gets out to the 39-yard line and picks up a first down. That's 14 yards. And notice Dallas Davis, the best thing about this situation is he drives the man deep, but Kirk, watch the way he catches with his hands. That is impressive on a night like this. It makes a pretty good move after him. Yeah, he did a good job getting upfield. After he made the catch, 
finds a little bit of a seam, picks up another 10 yards. He has great quickness. Remember last time we were here against Utah, he can make great, a lot of great plays for you. Two great punt returns for touchdown. With Wolston here now, Leon Smith is the H-back who's in motion. And Newton fires down the middle, and incomplete, but a marker comes in. The receiver's progress was impeded. Air Force, which does not pick up many penalties, gets one there. In fact, by yardage-wise, they're the least penalized football team in the Mountain West Conference. Which does that surprise you with Air Force? Every, every year. Almost, sign of you know? well-coached football yep. team and discipline. Yeah. Fisher's trying to say they can't be pass interference because it was so high it was uncatchable. 15 yards from the previous spot. Automatic first down. But the man whose opinion matters says no. Well, Matt Newton, the junior out of Inglewood, Colorado, he's completed about 59% of his passes this year, moving up on 2,000 passing yards, and has improved steadily as the year has gone on. Well, he continues to improve, and he's two different quarterbacks. When, when they give him time to throw and it allows him to step into his target, he has a big arm. When he throws off that back foot, like a lot of quarterbacks, the ball tends to flutter. From the Air Force 46, maybe looking long here. Air Force has good coverage. Newton fires into it anyway, and it's incomplete. Could have been intercepted by Sean Smog, the strong side corner out of Broomfield, Colorado. And you notice who they went to, that speedster we've liked since the first time we've seen him. Frank Rice, the junior college player. He had three touchdowns against UNLV last week, two pass receptions, and also one reverse. I've liked him since the first time we've seen him, Kirk. Great, great speedster, speed. had a great game last week, got out a couple times. One of the things that uh, Steve Fairchild, the offense coordinator, went to, I think he went maybe a little bit early there, trying to go over top, uh, getting the defense to bite up on Kevin McDougal. You have to establish him a little bit more and then try to go over the top with a play action pass. Second and 10, McDougal keeps it this time to the 42-yard line. Oh, misdirection, look. Matt Palmer and Thorstensen over there at top to tackle. Air Force has a very unique scheme defensively. They're going to attack you. They're going to have a lot of zone blitzing. But what's different about their scheme is they're not going to leave themselves vulnerable to the outside. They don't feel they have blazers at cornerback, both guys in a 4-6 range. So because of that, they'll play a cover three, kind of an umbrella shell to prevent the big play in the one-on-one -on -one matchup. But they do come up with a variety of different zone blitzes. And it works. They are tough to score on. 11th in the nation scoring defense. 35 throw is back to a first down by Pete Redstock, who takes it to the 10. 32 yards. First and goal for the Rams. We talked about the zone blitz. That time Air Force came with a, a number of people. Great job by Colorado State of picking up the blitz. That's what I'm talking about with Matt Newton. When you give him that time, he can throw the ball in there with great accuracy. Rep starts only 5'9", 190. He makes a nice move in a post route, and then after that, covers the ball up. I like that. The reason I like that play most is because you said Matt Newton followed through and really threw it. And you have to do that against the win. Yep. They can just barely pick up a first down. Ball just shy of the 10, Jay Charlon Jones, the move man. And McDougal up the gut to the three. Hard nose running from the senior Kevin McDougal playing his final home game here at Hughes Stadium tonight. Colorado State's been inside the 20 in the red zone 22 times and scored 20, 16 touchdowns. And this is one of the reasons why McDougal's got enough strength to run it right in there, Kirk. I like the fact that they go for touchdowns and not those old field goals all the time. And the offensive line, how about, their, how about the push at the point of attack? Nice job up front. David Schoen, right tackle, right guard, did a nice job. Three for the first down, three and a half for the touchdown to take the lead. They'll try McDougal. Nothing doing. John Spolsky, the senior out of Redford, Michigan, made the play off the nose. Now, this is the time, and I'm first guessing, not okay, second guess. Right, right, you fake, you fake McDougal and run a bootleg at you with those tight ends crossing. The reason why you do that is they're now flowing very fast and quick to McDougal, Kirk. And like you come back with that. You like that? I like that. I like that. As the first first guess of the night, right? That's right. Do you four, get one for the quarter? First you get guess. Many as you no want. I got no the limit. mic class. Yeah. <laughs> There's no limit. No limit. 
fake the McDougal and cross people. I like it. Dallas Davis at the bottom of your screen. There's the fake. Newton looking. Good coverage. Tries to keep it. Tries to run it. No signal yet. Remember, they can get a first down right about where he is. Touchdown! It's exactly what we talked about. He faked the McDougal, frees the linebackers, he brought the tight end across, but as the tight end comes across, is covered. He makes a nice run, Kirk. 6'3", 215, runs it pretty good. You can see Matt Newton is just beginning to become more of a complete quarterback there. Sat in the pocket with great patience, saw there was nobody open. Instead of throwing it away, realized there was a little bit of a seam there, took a chance, and had a nose for the end zone. Impressive drive against the win. Yes. That's very important. Very good point. C.W. Hurst on for the extra point. Thirty of thirty-one this year. Well, Matt Newton, the quarterback, his fourth rushing touchdown of the season to cap off a nine-play, eighty-yard drive. Steve Fairchild has to be very happy with the development of this young quarterback. I can't, I can't begin to tell you how much he's improved. Look at the patience in the pocket. We mentioned he had a nice job of improvising. And you get, Matt Newton is not a guy that has tremendous speed. For, for him to be able to find that seam, make a move, and get in there is very impressive. 23 times Colorado State's been inside the red zone now. 21 scores and 17 touchdowns. That's impressive. Well, every time we see a team that struggles in the red zone, why is it? Because they can't run the ball, power running. And as you said, Lee, the threat of McDougal gives them the advantage to score touchdowns. 80 yards, nine plays, over four minutes into the win, as, as Lee mentioned. It's going to be a, a drive that they're going to possibly look back at late in this game and really be thankful they were able to move the ball into that brisk win. Well, the fans have arrived late, and understandably so, with winds at uh, 20, 25 miles per hour and higher gusts. Why would you sit in the stands and wait for the game to start? And because of the limited access roads into Hughes Stadium, there is still a long stream of cars coming in from all angles. C.W. Hurst picking to Scott McKay and Leotis Palmer into the wind. A beautiful kick. And McKay can just take a knee. The drive will start from the 20-yard line. ESPN's first and 10 is presented by AMD, Athlon Processor. Needing to get to the 30 for a first down, the Air Force offense takes the field behind Mike Thiessen. It was Cale Bonds, the senior who had this team going, was injured at Colorado State. Thiessen came on, a couple of 100-yard running performances individually, snatching the job away this week. First down run to the fullback, and Scott Becker has very little room to run. Who, uh, Tuatelli made the play. Say that a lot tonight. Mentioned that crowd coming in, and they're, you know, they're right now close to capacity, and they're, they're still, they're still rolling in. There you go. <laughs> it's unbelievable. Get a little traffic report for us here. Over here is the rodeo. <laughs> you just, you just missed, missed it. Just missed it. <laughs> Rodeo, they nice, nice. Uh, we were pulling in earlier today. The cattle were out there looking good. The last time we were here, they had more people at the rodeo than they did in the stadium. Remember not, that? Not this time. <laughs> not this time. <laughs> Colorado State, in front of its nine biggest crowds in school history, is one and eight. The pitch was late and set up to get knocked down was Rillos. Terrence Gibson took the opportunity. Pitch fooled no one. Now bring up third and ten for Air Force. That's perfectly defended there by Colorado State. Yet Clark Hagan's a defensive end come down on the on the dive. Quarterback took it up to the next level. And Gibson got off the block and came up to take the pitch. Perfect execution defensively. Watching the tapes, they like to throw back on third down situations. Quarterback draw for Thiessen, needing to get to the 30. Oh, he's a great runner. You can see the moves he made. Mike Thiessen, 35 yards to the Colorado State 45. 
Mike Thiessen is an incredible athlete. He plays shortstop for the Air Force baseball team. He, he, is, he has tremendous athletic ability right here early. He knows exactly what he's going to do. He sees the seam. He's going to be able to pick it up and take off. Once he cuts into the open field, look at the move on Tuatelli. Now he realizes he still doesn't have the first down. Now he gets across. Now he's thinking, I'm not going to go out of bounds. I want, I want big yards. The thing we talked about before, remember, Fisher DeBerry says the reason why he likes it, he's a halfback disguised in the quarterback position. Excellent runner. After the pickup of 35, they'll scrimmage from the CSU. 45. There's two yards for the fullback. Scott Becker, one thing they have in this team this year is depth at the fullback spot. You know that guy's going to take a pounding every play. It's nice to have depth if you're running the fishbowl. They mix in three different fullbacks, and it's one of these things that when you have a, an option attack, you rely heavily on the fullback. If, as Fisher DeBerry, as an offensive coordinator for Air Force, it feels very, very good to know you're going to rotate a, a different guy in there. Keep him fresh. Chris Wade, the junior, gets his first carry. Stopped at the 36, but he powered forward, took Hagens and Olsen to the 35. That could be a first down. While they check it, hey, the good fans in New Orleans will be ready for Sunday Night Football. Ricky Williams and the Saints take off the best in the NFL. From a record standpoint, the Jacksonville Jaguars, ABC's Monday Night Football brings the Raiders. Down I-25 from here to Denver to take on the Broncos at Mile High. ABC and ESPN, your exclusive home for the National Football League in prime time. You guys see where Mike Dick is going to the I formation now with Ricky Williams, putting a guy in front of him, a smart move. That's what he did so well in Texas. Why not do it in the National Football League? Why not do it in game one? Yeah, well, because you know why? Because probably no one else thought about it. Dick had probably took over the offense, as you know, two weeks ago and said, forget about it. You guys, there's a spot on the Sunday show, Sunday NFL Countdown. We have two hours Sunday and Monday. We can squeeze a mystery guest in, perhaps, if you'd like to join us, guys. <laughs> uh, they picked up the first down, as you saw, by half the football. Thiessen's third down run, keeping this drive alive. First pass of the night for Air Force. No, 13th run of the night for Air Force. Thiessen hogtied by Lucas Smith after six yards. Here's Dr. Jerry Punt. Guy starting defensive tackle for Colorado State, Jamie Bennett, the junior out of Cleveland, Ohio. Left ankle. They brought him over to the base. They're going to try to spat the ankle, try to get him back on the play field. They can. He turned the ankle about uh, two series ago, about a, two plays ago, I should say. But uh, he's having trouble putting weight on it. Uh, he may or may not get back in. It looks pretty significant. That's why Lucas Smith was in there. He's the backup to Bennett and made the play. Well, that will be the final play of the first quarter as time expires. Well, Air Force will now head into the win, but they've got the ground game. Decent kept the drive alive. Air Force trying to retake the lead. Well, we are set to start the second quarter here in Fort Collins. Somebody once told me, Craig, uh, Kirk, if you're going to come to a game, make sure you're there by face-off or kickoff. Yeah, get there, get there early. This, this looks like a uh, field of dreams. If you build it, they will come. Hey, look at that. Lee Corso, you were that person's hero back there. Oh, it's nice. They, obviously, they haven't watched college game day. <laughs> <laughs> you haven't had to pick against it at Colorado State all year. We come back to second and four. Another run. It is Scott Becker, the fullback. You see Becker at the first and ten line. He'll be very close to a first down. Of well, the first 15 minutes, as you would expect, nothing in the air for Air Force or for Colorado State. Pretty balanced, really. Impressive is that Matt Newton took him the length of the field there against the wind throwing the football. And the best runner on the football field is Mike Thiessen, the quarterback for the he looks, Air Force. He looks good tonight. He is He's very, very good runner. We talked about him in the open asserting himself yeah. in this offense, gaining more and more confidence. Gets better each week. Thiessen has 46 rushing yards on third and short. No advance to James. Simply done by the fullback Scott Becker. Well, they are among the nation's leader in rushing every year. They do the same thing, variations of it a few years ago, but why can't teams effectively shut down Air Force's rushing attack? Well, it's because you don't see it every week. You know, we, we talked yesterday with the Air Force coaches and with Colorado State coaches, and it, it's the fact that you only have a few days to prepare for it. It's tough to simulate that look, the speed of it, the execution. All of a sudden, you get out in the game, and it's, it's, it's going much quicker than what you anticipated as a defensive player. From the 23, this is first down. 
Beeson got away from the would-be tackler and made a three-yard loss, a five-yard gain. Greg Pollard was sitting and waiting to pounce, and Thiessen got away. You need a good running quarterback to run this offense, and the service academies are the ones who are using it, as you see. Air Force up there with Navy, Army and Navy, the top three in rushing leaders in the country. The difference is Air Force could play defense, and Army and Navy can't, and that's why they're losing. Air Force runs it and plays defense. Air Force also has a little bit more of a threat of the passing game. That's why they're right now at the top as far as the service academies are concerned. Army three and six right now, Navy four and six. Another carry for Scott Becker, the fullback, is continuing to move Colorado State defenders in the chains. You mentioned why is it so tough to stop, and it's also the diversity. You, as a defense, you don't see it very often. It's tough to prepare for the execution and the speed of it. And then you, you go against everything you teach as a defensive staff because you, you, it's assignment football. You have the fullback. You have the halfback. You have the quarterback. Here, the leg drive and the running ability. Here to the inside by Air Force number 44, Scott Becker. I mean, it, this is something that's very, very difficult to prepare for. With decent at quarterback, it'll be impossible to stop. First and goal, the give is to Chris Wade. Mike McKenzie shut him down for a yard or so. Once again, here's Doc Punch. Guys, we're talking to some of the Air Force players in the hotel today. I asked them about stopping the option. So if you want to see how to stop the option, watch the service academies play each other. How do they stop each other when they try to run the option? And the best way to stop it, really, you talk about a middle linebacker or a defensive end, but see what Notre Dame did to Air Force a few years ago. They put a, a nose guard right on the center, and they popped the center. If you push that center back a yard, a yard and a half, when he snaps the ball, he's right on top of the quarterback. The quarterback can't get any separation. The dive back can't do what he needs to do, and you basically have neutralized the triple option. See how Colorado State handles it on the 12th play of the drive. Thiessen peaking. Nice play from behind to pull him down. Clark Higgins. The sack leading senior. Higgins is so quick. 6'4, 255. Watch him come down and close. He's on a stunt to stop the fullback. He goes all the way across Kirk and stops that great runner. Nice quickness for a guy that big, boy. Well, he came across in the penetration for big. He's known for his ability to sack quarterbacks in the Mountain West who drop back to pass. But here tonight, early in the game, he's starting to see that he also can do some damage to this triple option. They try to run away from him. I would run right after we talked about today, didn't we? Here's third and goal for the Air Force Academy. Get it in the hands of Scotty McKay, and Mike McKenzie was waiting for him. Field goal coming up. Well, it's interesting to me to play calls. My man, Mike Thiessen, did not run the football once. Guys, right, so my man now. He used to be your man in pre-show, but okay. now he's my man. Okay. He did not run the ball once. And when you got a guy like that, you got to find a way, Mike, to get the ball in his hands. <laughs> Jackson Whiting comes on for the field goal, 11 of 11 this year. You can borrow my man for a drive. The left-footed kicker from 24 yards is plenty good so nobody in the nation's as good as 12 for 12. Sonny Lubick's defense did hang around and limited Air Force to just three. Glad to be in Fort Collins on this Thursday night in the Mountain West. Remember the stakes are high. Other than this being a rivalry both teams are six and three and the winner keeps bowl hopes alive. The loser is done have touched the end zone and the college rules once it makes contact with the end zone it becomes a touchback well here's our aflac trivia question for the night how many air force quarterbacks have thrown for 200 or more yards in a game this decade air force quarterback throwing for over 200 in a game this decade how many times does it happen it's our aflac trivia question which the mm. gentleman will take a shot at a little bit later on in the show This week, we didn't let you guys anywhere near the question. Right. It's not how many quarterbacks. One guy could go two or three times, right? So it's how many yes. times. Yes. How many quarterbacks? No, no. This is ridiculous. It's a trivia question, for goodness sakes. Newton sets up the screen for McDougal, who got a nice block. And Kevin McDougal running hard for 16 yards to the 36. He's finally healthy and looks it. Matt Newton dropping back once he gets back into the pocket. 
He's going to try to look off of his of his running back, Kevin McDougal. McDougal comes off to the outside. Now he's got some blockers. Once he picks up momentum and speed, he's tough to bring down with that first hit. Another first down there for Kevin McDougal. It's Sapahia, number 61, the right tackle. I've been waiting to say his name for three weeks. Sapahia makes a good block on that screen play. Wayne, the senior from Oxnard, California. First and ten for the 36. McDougal bounces outside for a couple of yards. But well, one of the advantages of having Colorado State three times is missing with Sonny Lubick, but also Lee getting you know, three weeks to work on these names like <laughs> Sapahia. Sapa is my favorite because he's 6'3", 310 pounds, and he can run. He's made great plays every time we've seen him, Kirk, on either screens or some kind of toss play where he leads the guy out there. Has good speed. He Last yeah. time we were here against Utah, he got to the outside. That's right. Guy has a chance to play at the next level. Senior on senior night here in Fort Collins. Newton's first down pass. Rice couldn't shake free and got two to 40. About three yards for Frank Rice, the junior. This is a quick screen where the quarterback will start one way and throw it out. And Sapahia is responsible to come out and watch him. Nice play, Sapahia. Get out there. Oh, that's a knockout. Nice, go on. <laughs> if that guy saw Sapahia coming, he went right to the turf, boy. That was the exact play we talked it's about that right. opened up against Utah where he was able to block that cornerback out. Tony Jones. The weak side corner out of Columbia, South Carolina, saw Blaine coming at him. Third and six. Newton's had a good night. Five of seven throwing. Intercepted. The good night goes away. Matt Palmer, the junior from Boulder, the team's top tackler, gets his second interception of the season. Flag came down. Holding. Offense. That penalty is refused. First down. And is wiped away. Number 87 is going to come in motion right here. Joey Capari. Once he gets off field, you can see that Matt Newton is trying to evaluate between McDougal and Capari. And in between, he has Palmer. That's his read. Palmer's going to not even hesitate. He starts to run, does a nice job of turning back and making the interception. After his second, second interception of the season, Air Force gets the ball in Colorado State territory. The pitch is to Willis. Matt stepped out of bounds. Kirk, can I come back to that play for a second? If you're a quarterback and you don't see the linebacker's head turned around, does that give you a sign, hey, maybe I can squeeze it in because he may not get himself turned around and make an interception? Quarterbacks with a big arm like Matt Newton, they have a lot of confidence. They believe they can always squeeze it in. But in that case, where Palmer is turning and running, you have to be able to evaluate that and maybe dump it underneath. But if you saw, there was a tough decision because the other inside linebacker was up tight. So he, I think that was a good decision by Newton. I just don't think he expected Palmer to turn around the way he did. Great play by Palmer. Remember, Richard Bell, the defensive coordinator, said that Palmer was his quickest linebacker. That's why he got back there. He did. Nothing on second and seven. Third down coming up. Before that, let's remind you about the ESPN2 college football lineup. Number two, Virginia Tech. Remember, Temple got him last year. Beware in Philly this week. And then a great SEC doubleheader, Georgia Ole Miss. Mississippi State taking on Arkansas. That's our lineup on ESPN2. ESPN, your home for Bowl Week. Virginia Tech's only concern would have to be heading into a veteran stadium where, you, you know, you get 3,500 to 4,000. Honestly, it can lull you to sleep. Forget about it. Well, well just, uh, they'll you, win. But... You see Ula Tuatelli, who's very important to this team because of what they're doing and emotionally. He's down and hurt the senior. Injured on that play up the middle. Top tackler on this Colorado State team. We mentioned the linebacking youth with Rick Kroll lost already for Sonny Lubick, and now he watches his middle linebacker, the senior Tuatelli, down on the field. We'll check the injury to Ula when we come back to Fort Collins. Does this sound familiar? Directory assistance. What city and state? I think Arlington. Or, or wait, maybe it's Alexandria. What listing? Wait, <laughs> I, I, but I haven't given you the city yet. Don't you just hate talking to machines? Please hold. Wait, hold. <laughs> I, 
You don't even know what to look for. Why talk to machines? Get real help. Dial 1010-9000 and our friendly operators will help you find the number. Even dial it with no connection charge. 1010-9000. Directory assistance made easy. As you might expect, Teller and I don't see eye to eye on investing. I like to avoid risk. Teller is a little more daring. We do, however, share the same new way to trade online. Introducing Power Street by Fidelity. The first site with trading tools customized by Lycos to fit your unique way of doing things. Look, the market's up, or in your case, down. Power Street Online Trading. To find out how you could win free trades for life, visit Fidelity.com. Are you ready for the drive of your life? The high octane ride of the season. If you only drive one game this year, make it Test Drive 6. Test Drive 6, Fall 99. The Mississippi State defense going up against the diversified Arkansas offense. Who will be standing last? Mississippi State, Arkansas at 9, Saturday on ESPN2. Well, Ula Tuatelli, who was down, was helped off the field, but not putting much pressure on his leg. We'll keep an eye on the injury. Sonny Lubick's team now with three freshmen in the linebacking core against this tough-to-stop complex Air Force offense. It's third and four, and Thiessen, the quarterback, gets popped right at the line. Looks like he'll be a yard short. John Howell, the safety, came up to make the play. An interesting call here by Air Force. You mentioned the, free fr the three freshmen at the linebacking position. You, you have to think, if that continues, and Tuatelli has to stay on the sideline, that Fisher to Barry is going to come up with a way to attack that, make some adjustments, and go after that, that youth at the linebacking position. Going to go for it here on fourth and short. Quarterback Steve. Thiessen assesses, adjusts, and a devastating false start will force them to punt. You know why that happened? The quarterback comes up and starts calls a complicated automatic system with fourth and an inch. Get the ball by the quarterback sneak and watch the right guard now. Paul Townsend. Paul Townsend. Watch him. See, the quarterback was given all that stuff about red 46. I see this. Right. Forget about it. Uh, when we sat down with Fisher to Barry, I couldn't even get the question out. Are you, have you been happy with your offense before he said right away, no. We've self-destructed this year. We don't have a lot of penalties. We've had critical penalties and costly turnovers. There again, the offense making that, that critical penalty. But that was caused by the coaching staff going to an automatic system with fourth and an inch. So Scott Gradman kicks now to the nation's fifth leading return man in Dallas Davis. Obviously try to keep it away from Davis. A beautiful job by Gradman. It will be out of bounds at the two. The 14th time in 50 kicks that the senior has pinned his team in. Ula Tuatelli was hurt on that drive. Still, the Colorado State defense came up with the hole, but the punter for Air Force, Griven, has given Colorado State 98 yards of field to work with. There is Ula Tuatelli, who's been trying to See if he can go on that leg injury. Dr. Jerry Punch will update us momentarily after the great punt by Air Force. Colorado State wind at its back. Leading by one. 97 yards of field to go. And a big opening for McDougal. With a blocker leading him. Still on his feet. Six yards. Longest run of the year for McDougal. Uh, one of the things we talked about was Kevin McDougal's ability to run, but also his cutback ability. Remember, he starts it right, makes a good block, comes down, and this is what I like most about this kid. Watch him, Kirk. He's using his blocker very well, isn't he? 
Did a good job in the open field here. You, you have to give a little bit of credit there to number 10. Small because of the, the way he was able to fight off the, uh, the lead blocker there. Yeah, Dallas David, Davis. David Schoen, the right guard, made a perfect block on that play. <laughs> good sign. 66 yards equals the long run of McDougal's career that he had in 1997. Sean Sanders comes in to give him a break, and the freshman out of San Diego picks up only a yard. Craig Thorstenson on the tackle. The run that got him out of there deep in their own territory. The offensive line, it's an in, inside zone scheme. Lee, you mentioned David Shaw at number 60. Watch him, what he's able to do here in sealing that linebacker. It allows McDougal to cut back, and when the safety came up to try to make the big hit, Wes Glisson, it takes one guy to miss, and then McDougal's out of there. And that was a big play. Good job again up front by the line. Remember, he scored on a 56-yard touchdown against Colorado, so he's got good speed. Second down, Newton a deep drop. Two McDougals back in the game. Picked up about eight. Did a nice job. Gave him some time to throw. Jerry Punch on the injury to Tuatelli. Guys, good news from the Colorado State sidelines. A very, very mild, maybe grade one, medial collateral sprain to the left knee. Ula Tuatelli should be back in. His right knee was the one they had scoped early in the year. He's up, walking around, should be back in on the next defensive series. That's great news for the Colorado State fans. If you weren't with us earlier, their H backcourt, Wolston Hume, suffered a neck injury, although he had just some tingling in one arm some numbness other than that he had feeling in other extremities and was conscious was taken off by stretcher newton takes a break we'll step out as well csu driving thanks to the long run by mcdougall uh, it's time the Aflac trivia question answer how many air force quarterbacks have thrown for 200 or more yards in a game this decade guess gentlemen kirk Three. I'd say one, Bo Morgan. You're kidding me. No. None. <laughs> Trick question, sweetheart. D. Dallas Wait in 1989. Wait a minute. You didn't, you didn't ask me if that was my last, <laughs> my last choice. You're Regis up. Filbert, where are you when I need you? You know what? Regis is being seen by a couple of more people than the three of us right now. He's got no time for you. Third and two, Redstock the receiver. Looking for the home run punch for Redstock. Great adjustment! Touchdown! You take the receiver, I take the back. He threw the interception one drive earlier. This time with the wind at his back. Newton gives CSU a bigger lead. C.W. Hurst, the junior from Sherman, Texas. And his 31st extra point of the year, second of the night, 97 yard drive, capped off by Redstock. Third touchdown of the year. Well, Revstock made it happen with the adjustment in the air to be able to go up and make the acrobatic catch. You can see what Coach Fairchild, the offensive coordinator, was trying to go with a hitch and go, try to get the corner and the safety to bite up. Simply at that point, after the fake, he just put the ball in the air in the corner away from the defender, and again, Revstock makes the catch. The reason why he makes that catch is Tony Jones, number 20, the defensive back, doesn't go for the ball. He waits for it. He's got to go for the ball like a receiver in that situation, and maybe he gets a piece of it. I, I don't think he saw the ball. That's probably why I couldn't react. And a big one for Matt Newton after throwing the interception earlier and giving Air Force the ball in Colorado State territory. Bounces right back. Good numbers on the night for Newton. Went the length of the field on that drive in a minute 49, thanks in large part to the 66-yard run from Kevin McDougal. We talked about it at the beginning of the show. If McDougal runs the football, then Colorado State can play action and throw the ball. And he's been running the ball very well so far. The most impressive thing besides McDougal for the Rams tonight has been Matt Newton's presence. You can see he is a confident quarterback right now, as opposed to when we saw him earlier in the year, still feeling his way. He's gaining more and more confidence as this year has gone on. After its longest touchdown drive of the lead, a touchback. 
Air Force will take over from its own 20. On this cool night here in uh, Fort Collins, Colorado, I'm very impressed with the way Colorado State has taken a couple of adversity situations and kept going and maintained the lead. Starting with McDougal, seven for 83 rushes. And here's the thing I like about him now for the next level. Two catches for 24 yards. If he's going to play in the National Football League, he's got to catch it. Well, how about the balance? Ten throws, ten runs for Colorado State. Good. They've had balance throughout this year, and early in this game, that's been the key to their success. Well, Air Force yet to throw the ball. They had one pass play call that became a quarterback scramble. The 24th run of the night. Thiessen should be a first down just across the 30-yard line. The thing that impresses me about Thiessen is he's gotten a little quickness to him. Maybe that's why he's such a good baseball player the shortstop. Watch him come down the line. He's reading out. Now watch. Boop. Right there is what I like, Kirk. The fact that he's got a little quickness to him. See, what I like is when he makes the turn, he's thinking, I'm keeping this football. As an option quarterback, that's what you want. A guy that wants to keep the ball in his hands, forces the defense to take him away, and then makes him deal it. Pushing 100 rushing yards already. Not much for Nathan Beard, the junior out of Grand Junction, Colorado. An opportunity to remind you, Ohio State, Michigan. The records mean nothing. One of the great rivalries in all of sport. Live across the country at noon Eastern on ABC, the doublehead header continues with Penn State, Michigan State, or UCLA, USC. All from ABC Sports, a doubleheader from the home of the Bowl Championship Series coming up this weekend. Here's Kevin McDougal. We equaled his career long run on that last drive. Second and seven deflection is nearly intercepted by Mike McKenzie. The junior out of Miami, Florida was looking at a dream twirling in the air. He couldn't come down with the defensive lineman interception. I think it was Chad McGuckin who was in there defensively to cause the interception opportunity. Got his hand up and deflected it. And once he did, the defense alignment, that's a dream come true. You have the ball there. Just all you got to do is your hands are taped. You have pads on there. Get a wrap up and make the catch. That was their first pass attempt of the night. Nearly turned into disaster. Will Air Force go to the air again? the first down. Thiessen's trying to do it alone right now. Keep your eye on Mike McKenzie, number 76, coming from the inside. He's made three great plays in a row. Now, you might wonder why a guy from Miami, Florida, would come to Fort Collins. The reason is Sonny Lubeck coached at Miami and still has a lot of friends there who re recommend guys like McKenzie right there. If they can keep Air Force in third and six plus, Colorado State's chances are very, very good tonight of stopping that, uh, that option attack. Chances good when Dallas Davis is back to return kicks. Robbins trying to kick it to the sidelines, give Davis no room to run. That's a violation. Oh, there he is. And the flag is down. Old Kirk's play right there. You can talk about it, Kirk. Tell us about well, it. Well, uh, we get the halo violation. We get it a couple times. What happens is that receiver's back there. I want it one time. You're, you're going to be the receiver, right? You're going to come down. Scooter one time, baby. No, one no, time. Right there. But, but <laughs> two, you get two yards. Get away from me. Get two yards right here. Get away from me. And everybody seems to get in here. Yeah. But see, what gets me upset is when they get blocked yeah. into it. One time, baby. One time with the forearm. Easy, sweetheart. Easy. Do we need to separate you two? You're obviously much tougher than I am. I'm freezing here with a jacket. Catch interference against the kickers. Five yards from the spot of the foul. First down. The old guy's just got a sweater on. He's much tougher than we are. Yeah, he's a tough guy. Oh. Dr. Jerry Punch, please save us. Hey, guys, uh, there were four preseason Buckus Award candidates in the Mountain West Conference, and right, Colorado State had one guy, outside linebacker, Rick Kroll. And, Rick, this was the kind of night you dream about playing as an outside linebacker when you play a running team like Air Force. Almost certainly. It's any linebacker's dream, and, you know, it's just unfortunate I couldn't be out there, but, you know, everyone's doing the job. Your best friend on this football team and roommate is Ula Tuatelli. When you went down against New Mexico State, he was going to honor you in a very, very special way each day of practice. Oh, yeah. Well, he won my jersey, you know, as you can see right there. And, uh, you know, it means a lot to me. And, you know, he's, he's my best friend, my best roommate. I mean, hey, uh, 
It's, it's a big tribute to me. Aula is, normally wears number 42. He wore your number six at practice. Now, what is the basic uh, emphasis on how do you shut down the fishbowl, this option attack at the airport? You guys are doing a pretty good job, but you're doing it with a side of the football, right? Almost every, you gotta uh, be disciplined for one. You know, get off the cut blocks that they, you know, they cut all the time and just make the tackle. I know you're a little bit concerned when Ula went down a little bit ago. The good news is he's going to be coming back in very, very soon. Uh, hey, thanks for joining us, and, and have a great senior night. We're sorry we couldn't see you play. Thank you very much. Rick Kroll, guys, a Buckus Award candidate for the Colorado State Rams. He had a touchdown in the big win against Colorado, where McDougal certainly was a shining star for the Rams. That game played in Denver. McDougal going out on senior night in grand style. He's had two rushes on this drive for seven yards. Now it's third and three. Newton fires a first down strike to Dallas Davis to the 44-yard line. He has arm strength and showed it there. Ten yards. Newton continuing a good night. Newton right away looking off to his left. It's when, I, when he steps and throws, he can throw the ball with a lot of velocity. That is the key. Right away, he saw the cushion that he wanted. Unbelievable that Air Force would give him 10 yards off the line of scrimmage, especially with a talented wide receiver like Dallas Davis. But that's what Kurt Duffy decided to do along with number 20, Jones. First and 10. Late for Repstock, who was running out of real estate. Let's check in with Chris Fowler, see what's coming up at halftime. Chris? Mike, coming up with the original Coors halftime report, Mike and Ryde will break down some game plan aspects of the big game, which outside of the Bay Area means the Knowles and the Gators. We'll also talk about that Cal Stanford game on rivalry weekend and on hidden video. We'll see a crime captured on videotape. Trust me, you'll want to stick around. <laughs> All right, Chris, see you at halftime and promises a crime at the break. The Falcons are down eight with 2.40 left before the half. Leon Smith in motion. Like a throw for Newton to Remstock. Caught the touchdown earlier. But kills himself across the first and 10 line but lost the ball. Rams think they got it back. And you know who got it? Your boy. Sapahia. Number 61 out there. Look at him. And a boy Sapahia. He wants to keep the ball. Number 61, <laughs> Lane Sapahia is coming out to block. And all of a sudden, you'll watch him. He's alert for 310 pounds. Watch that agility, huh, Kirk? What? Get in there. Quick oh. as a cat. Quick as a cat. Oh, quick as a cat. But Kirk, once again, trying to get him out there in the open field. By the time I finish with him, Sapahia will be an award winner. Lombardi Trophy or something. Kirk Duffy crossed the fumble for Air Force. Did a nice job, too. Newton unloading. Frank Rice was battling Duffy. Rice looks to be shaken up on the play for a moment. Let's go back to Jerry. Hey, Coach Lee Corso. Blaine Sapaia has a dream. It's seniors night, and his dream is to catch a pass for a touchdown. And believe me, Keep your eyes on Safaia. The night is young yet. Jerry must know something we don't know. Jerry knows a but lot you of know things what? we don't know. I don't think they can throw tackle eligibles anymore, right? No, they can't. You can't throw to a guy with 61. Sure you can. No, you can't. You got to do is declare him. Well, he well, got to declare him eligible. By that time, everybody jumps on him. No, that's not, not Anthony Munoz. He had a few times. He's one of the best. That's in the old days, the new rules. Well, there is the injury to Frank Rice, who, as we mentioned, responsible for three touchdowns last time Colorado State played. Colorado State had this past Saturday off. Meantime, Air Force is playing on a short week. They've done that often this year, in part because it's very hard when you schedule Army and Navy within the conference window once you get past those first three or four weeks of the season, and then you're still trying to play your conference schedule at the same time. It becomes very difficult for conference schedule. Thus, Air Force has had to play now for the fifth time against somebody who had a bye week before them. Newton's throw is caught by Kupari. Joey Kupari to the 15-yard line. A little zip on that 28-yarder, huh? 
offensive line doing a great job of giving Matt Newton protection. We've talked about it all evening long. When you give him time to throw, he can throw the football very accurately and with a lot of velocity. There, once again, they're going to attack the inside with its own defense. They're going to come to the inside. Kapari's been coming on the last couple weeks as a talented wide receiver. But I also like the fact that Kevin McDougal got a cut block, which will help him in the next level. You've got a block catch and run to play in the National Football League, and so far he's done all three tonight. Colorado State looking for a big advantage on Air Force here. Leading by eight from the 15. McDougal delivers the blow and gets down to the seven. Shoulder down, get out of my way. As we watch Kevin McDougal, number 36, his responsibility is to block from the inside out, and you'll notice there's a linebacker come from the outside. He cut blocks him, grabs him by the leg, which is not a bad move. Not great for him, but not, not, nonetheless, he did the job. But when he runs the football, Kirk, watch his low center, watch his, watch his. Boom! Boom! Remember, all he needed was 149 yards to get over 1,000 tonight. He has 97. He's used as a decoy here. Newton will keep it, get a yard inside of 50 seconds. Let's see if Colorado State stops the clock here. And they will. At 46. Not a third and a couple coming up for Colorado State. They've taken a timeout looking to extend an eight-point lead. We welcome you back here at Fort Collins, Colorado. You see Frank Rice walking off, certainly holding that right hand. Mike, you and Kirk, remember, we're updating this. Colorado State's been inside the red zone 23 times this year. 21 scores, 17 touchdowns to this point. Because they can run, then play action. McDougal, another blow delivered. Did his knee not come down? It did not. Great balance by McDougal, first and goal in the final 37 seconds. I know there are a lot of great running backs out there in college football, but I don't know if there's a tougher one than Kevin McDougal. We've seen it all the last, the last three times we've been here. You can see how hard he runs. These, these poor linebackers and safeties come up there. They're minding their own business. They're thinking they're coming up to make a play, and they're ending up on their back. It's, it's, he is running very, very hard tonight. First and goal, clock is running. They have one timeout left. Kupari caught it and dropped it. He had it, came back down and lost the handle. Remember, Kapari's in the game a little bit more now because Rice went off with the injury, and Rice is a man who has six touchdowns this year. The other thing about Kevin McDougal and see if he, they'll go to him here, he told us this is the healthiest that he has been since the CU game at the beginning of the season. And you could see a difference in, in his ability to run with authority when he's a healthy back. If they do run him, they got to call a quick timeout because there's only 20 seconds to go. And if he doesn't get in there, they got to call a timeout and then try to get in for a touchdown. And they have one left with 20 seconds to go. Different formation. First time we've seen this tonight. Cosmic Google, who is throwing. Touchdown! Leon! First career touchdown toss, first touchdown, or first overall pass attempt from Kevin McDougal. And a marker comes down. Dead ball, false start, offense, five yard penalty, repeat the try. The original course halftime report will come up as soon as we're done. Get back to Chris, Mike, and Rod. Look ahead to the big games on Rivalry Weekend. This is a great rivalry as well, fueled by the fact that big leads have disappeared two of the last three years. So even though Air Force is down 14, don't count them out just yet. Oh, 
High snap. Uh oh. C. W. Hurst. Not a runner. Well, it's a 14 point lead. Let's go back to something a little bit more artistic. Well, right away, you can see that Air Force is in trouble. Look at all the bodies they have over here. Meanwhile, Colorado State has all these tight ends, and here's a guy to keep an eye on, Leon Smith, number 17. He fakes the block, and absolutely nobody in the corner of the end zone. How about the touch by the running back, Kevin McDougal? Not bad. McDougal's everything. 11 rushes, 102. Two receptions, 24 yards. One touchdown pass, three yards. What do you think about that, Mike Tarico? What do you have for us? <laughs> Kevin McDougal's been coming to football games here a long time. His brother was a kicker. You know, his brother threw a key fake pass in his last year here. That helped set up a touchdown and a great comeback against Wyoming. McDougal now over 100 yards, as we mentioned, on the ground. There's his younger brother, along with his parents, Mike and Kathy. Sean is the little guy in the middle who wears his hat the same way the big brother does. <laughs> a little dancing going on in here? He looks like he's got that little bit of flakiness that Kevin has as well. <laughs> and we say that in a very kind way, too. Touchback for Scotty McKay. <laughs> Sonny Lubick said about McDougal, he's by far not even close, the toughest football player that I've ever coached. And you see that in the way he runs all the time. But you also brought up a good point. I, I'm not sure, but I think it was 17-point deficit. They've come from behind once. And I think the fact that Air Force goes in and does a nice adjustment at halftime, they're not out of this ball game yet. Absolutely not. 97, this was a 41-14 Air Force lead on this field. Colorado State stormed back. Last year, Colorado State led 17-0 early. Air Force stormed, stormed back to win the game in Colorado Springs. There's work to be done at the half. Sonny Lubick's team has taken advantage of all the opportunities, leading Air Force by 14. Falcons get the ball to start the third quarter. But first, here's Chris Fowler in the studio. Chris? Well, guys, Rams in front as we take you back to the second half there in Fort Collins. This is a team in Colorado State whose season was basically hanging on the brink. They rallied against Wyoming. Now they're a whole new team. Yeah, and, and Air Force isn't going to be able to do anything with them unless they mix up their option, maybe some counter option or something. But, Coach, I don't know if that's enough against Colorado State. Rams are playing with emotion. They want to go bowling. They no guarantees if they get this win, but it'd be a good start. We'll get you back to Mike, Kirk, Lee, and Jerry Punch. The second half from Fort Collins. Kevin McDougal, 100-plus rushing in the first half, and that touchdown pass, the margins 14. Hey. Sonny Lubick trying to lead Colorado State to a seventh win on the year. Air Force finding itself behind CSU. They were last year. They are again this year. Start of the third quarter. Mike Lee and Kirk, glad to be back with you here in Fort Collins. The quarterback play for Air Force was good. Decent ran it well, but the quarterback play for CSU was very good. Well, the, the play on Matt Newton has been exceptional. We talked about it early in the game and how he has developed as a quarterback. He's become more confident. 10 of 16 in the first half, 153 yards with one score and a pick. But his confidence, I think, is opening up the doors for the running back, Kevin McDougal, playing well in offense. you got to give Colorado State's defensive coordinator, Larry Kerr, a lot of credit. He's held uh, Air Force Academy without a touchdown. But remember one point, this is an interesting point. The Air Force Academy have scored 125 points in the second half. That's over 100 points more than they have in the first half. This team will not give up. They got good leadership, and they got good personnel that will be back. And it's adjustments. A toughness. Absolutely. Sure. Toughness. One thing also what I forgot to mention on the fact, Mike, is I always, when I played wishbone teams, and I know Larry does this, you always keep a defense that you haven't used before because they make such great adjustments at halftime and you spring it on the second half. Watch Colorado State to do some different things. Absolutely no passing yards for the Air Force Academy in the first half. See, and I think that is huge. I think zero passing yards for Air Force, and I know that they are a team that has to run the football, but in the second half, they don't need to scrap their attack, but they need to throw the ball a little bit more effectively to open up some other things. Air Force to get the ball into the win for this third quarter. The Hurst kickoff, the first one to be returned tonight. 
Scotty McKay will give it a shot. Right down to the 15. Fabulous special teams hit from Wallace Thomas, 84, a reserve defensive end. So Mike Thiessen will take over. A very good first half for Thiessen in terms of running the ball statistically, 8 for 71. There's nothing like it starting off to have the special teams knock somebody on the kickoff. But remember, the first six minutes of the second half usually determines how the second half goes, Kirk. This is a very important drive for the S Force Academy. Nathan Beard will start at the fullback spot. Late pitch. Out of bounds. Not a good start. Here's Dr. Jerry Punts. Go ahead, Jerry. Guys, at halftime, uh, Air Force head coach Fisher to very, very concerned about the mental mistakes. Very atypical for this kind of very disciplined offense. Concerned about the mental mistakes on his offense. Fourth and short, a procedure penalty cost him a chance at a continuing a drive and possibly a score. He talked very animatedly to his offense at the locker room at halftime. They have got to be able to maintain their assignments and their discipline. They have got to move the football here on this first drive in the second half. Second and 16, Matt Farmer, first catch, a lot of room. First down across the 32. Farmer, a senior, has caught 26 balls this year. To the top five all-time receptions and receiving yards for Air Force. I know Colorado State really respects his ability, and that's something they need to do. We talked about it here at the beginning of the half. They got to get Matt Farmer more involved. They have to throw the football. There he adjusts, goes up, makes the catch, and then he has the speed to get up field to get the first down. Matt Farmer is the first Air Force Academy receiver ever to be invited to the Hula Bowl. That means he's a sensational receiver. First down for the 32. Toss goes to Chris Wade. He'll pick up another first down. A dozen yards. Exactly what I told you, didn't I? They came out exactly like you hoped, a nice little pass. But you notice they've used two plays in the third quarter that they never used in the first half. The wishbone teams are sensational at that. Why? Because they can see the adjustments, and they know exactly what to do against it. What? And the staff's been together like 60 years. They know everything. Well, this staff has been together so long that they make great adjustments at halftime. Everybody comes up with a new way to attack this, this offense attack. And at halftime, they, they make the proper adjustments and find a new way to go after it. 45, Rillos. One yard. That is tackled by Eric Olson, senior Ventura, California. Colorado State, whether it's the option or whether it's the sweep to the outside, doing a good job of stretching things, allowing their pursuit and the speed of their defense to catch up to the ball carrier. There's Larry Kerr, the defensive coordinator. He's been nominated by the American Football Coaches Association as the assistant coach of the year, a nominee. That's a great honor for that man right there. Well deserved. He is, we've been here, we've seen him three times. He always seems to come up with some good schemes. That's a nice award, too. It's a great oh. idea to recognize the coordinators. Chris Wade trying to drag CSU tacklers, but John Howe made sure he was going no farther. Remember, Ula Tuatelli was hurt in the first half, back on the field here in the third quarter. Tuatelli comes from the inside out. Remember, he had a leg problem, but you watch him in the middle. His responsibility is inside, 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 and then out. Nice pursuit. Nice play. He's just slow enough to play that play. <laughs> a real fast linebacker would have went right past the guy. Well, you can see he's slowed down because of the injury, yeah. but the thing you have to love, it's his, he's his, it's his last game here this year. He, there was no way you're going to hold him out in this second half. Important third down for Airfield. Go throw. Drop. Fleming had it. Got hot. Ball came out. It was incomplete. What a hit by John Howe. Imagine being a wide receiver, Matt Farmer here coming across the middle. And it's punting time means Dallas Davis has the opportunity to perhaps get his hands on the ball. Well, Scott Grivens does a, has done a nice job, the Air Force punter, of kicking away from the man who scored twice on Thursday Night Football three weeks ago. Kick it to the sidelines. Caught by the Colorado State cheerleaders. 
not inside the 20. The drive will start just outside the 20 after this timeout. CSU by 14. Story goes when Lieutenant Collins was dispatched from Cheyenne, Wyoming to protect against the Indian raids. Named the town after him, Fort Collins. I'm sure he didn't envision a major university here, but here it is, Colorado State University. And the football team representing the school looking for a seventh win of the year, leading 20-6. to six. Aaron McDougall on first down. <laughs> Picking up where he left off. They can't bring him down. Six yards. For McDougal, Tony Metters made the tackle. Kevin McDougal over 100 yards in the first half. It'll be second down. ESPN's first in 10 is presented by AMD Athlon Processor. You see the first and 10 line along the 30 where Colorado State has to get to to keep the drive going. A very solid first half of the offensive end. That's three and a half games now that CSU's offense has played well. McDougal right at the line should have a first down. Kevin McDougal on 111 yards right now, carrying the football, but he's done so many other things for this offense. Here, picking up a blitz, doing a good job of giving his quarterback, Matt Newton, time to throw. Here on a screen pass, delays, moves off to the right wing, and then gets upfield and shows the ability, as, as usual, to break the tackle. And here, showing something he hasn't shown this year, the touch, throwing the ball for the touchdown. Kevin McDougal is a complete back, and when he's healthy, he's one of the best backs in all of college football. The reason I like him more and more is he played hurt. And in the National Football League, in the next, le next level, he's going to have to play hurt. And he's tough enough to go up in that league and play hurt and continue with that good, good records. So often they look at the speed, you know, that yeah. burst to see what you have. But with a guy like Kevin McDougal, it's the heart and the courage. And hopefully there's a spot for him at that next level. In the right offense, a uh, one-back set, power football. Certainly a place for McDougal. He did pick up the first down, so from the 30. He almost got his feet caught up with the offensive lineman. Dallas Davis could not bring it down. Tough throw, tough catch. Jerry Punch. Guys, uh, Colorado State Orthopedic Surgeon Rocky Trumper on the phone a moment ago with the hospital locally has gotten the word that Corey Wolston, who was and injured in the first half, his x-rays, his MRI of his neck are negative. He has just minimal numbness and tingling remaining in the left arm. We're thinking now it may simply be a stretch of the brachial plexus, a nerve stretch when his head was down and his shoulder was pulled to the side, but nothing broken. That's great news. Oh, absolutely, Jerry. Glad to hear that. The game was delayed a little bit in the first half for Wolston Hume's injury, but that's the wonderful news of the night. McDougal, a couple of first down yards. It'll be second down. You know, while we have a second, guys, uh, all of us who are part of the family that is college football, our thoughts go out to the families and friends of those who lost their lives at Texas A&M, continuing one of the great traditions in college football that has been a great tradition in the, the bonfire before the Texas-Texas A&M game. Our thoughts and prayers are not only with the family and friends, but all the Aggies across the land tonight. A third and seven pass is incomplete. Fans want flags and one comes from 40 yards away from the play. Came from Ken Griffey territory in deep, deep center field. They did eventually call the offside penalty, although we did not initially see that flag down, but the pass interference one will be the one that hurts. Offside on the defense, that penalty is refused. Pass interference, defense at the spot of the foul, automatic first down. 
It goes back to Doc's point. Fisher DeBerry talked to us yesterday about it. Criti critical mistakes. They had a lot of critical mistakes in the first half. And here, once again in the second half, they start off with more penalties, just self-destructing. Drives a coach nuts, right, Coach? Absolutely. Colorado State leading by 14. Looking for more. Newton's pass is nearly intercepted by the defensive lineman. Well, nearly a disastrous mistake. Newton had a linebacker interception in the first half. That time was almost a defensive lineman. Mike Tarico, Lee Corso, Kirk Herbstreit, Dr. Jerry Punch in front of 32,000 here at Hughes Stadium, Fort Collins, Colorado. The recipe of good defense and good running has worked well for Sonny Lubick before. It's working well again tonight. His star running back, Kevin McDougal, had over 100 yards in the first half. He sits at 115 on the night, and Colorado State leads by 14. Both teams are 6-3. and three. The winner's bowl hopes stay alive. The loser will be home for the holidays. Red Stock, who caught a touchdown earlier, gets a first down now. Pete Repstock, sophomore, Inglewood, Colorado, a Denver suburb. Big cushion to the outside there once again by Smog. Look at him push. Repstock will push, act like he's going deep. He turns Smog, and once he turns him, he's got him. Ball's perfectly thrown to the outside. Picks up the first down. Good job of pushing Smog deep, selling the, uh, the, the uh, deep route. 80 yards on four catches on the night for the sophomore Repstock. That is his most productive game of the season. Toss McDougal. Justin Borvansky, the center, tried to lead the way. He only gets about three yards. Well, as soon as we're done here in the Mountain West, it's Sports Center with Dan Patrick and Rich Eisen. Uh, Pedro Martinez, MVP debate. Drew Bledsoe and the, Pat, the Pats trying to bounce back from the loss to the Jets and the ESPN.com question of the night. We want to get you so enraptured in that question, we're not even going to tell you what it is. You've got to come watch Sports Center coming up after the game. How about leaving Pedro Martinez off a couple MVP ballots, huh? <laughs> Those people not a little self-involved. From midfield, it is second and seven. Newton's throw is late, and Nick Schaumburg, the junior tight end, watched it sail past him. Can too strong an arm be a, a liability for a quarterback? Can you well, feel like you can I, jam it in every time? Well, you, you, you feel as, as a quarterback with a big arm, you feel confident you can jam it in. I think the, the, the toughest thing for a young college quarterback that has a strong arm is to develop the touch. Certain balls you want to be able to unleash and really throw with a lot of authority. And then there's others you need to develop that very soft, finessed uh, ball, and it's, it takes a touch. It takes a little bit of time to develop that. But it's never a problem if your arm's too strong, sweetheart. Never that. Rather have too strong than too weak, huh? Thank you very much. 37, unload the cannon. Dallas Davis trying to come back for it. Flag on Sean Small. Davis is one on one with Small. And then watch this play as we come along into it. Just a second. Davis beats Smog, and then Smog just runs and doesn't look back at all until it's too late. He runs right into the guy. You made a point about five weeks ago. It's the same thing. If a guy doesn't look like he's going to try to catch it on defense, they always call that play, don't they? Yep. That's a if, perfect if it, example of it. If a defender does not at least act as yeah. if he knows where the ball yeah. is, chances are they're going to throw the flag. See, I remember you said that five weeks ago, and I've been watching for it, and that, again, is a perfect picture of it. You remember that? Yep. Right. That's a good point. Good job. Six flags on Fisher DeBerry's team. They average only five penalties per game. You know, the Air Force cornerbacks on those deep balls have to do a better job of finding the football. You look through the ear hole of the receiver and watch his eyes. When he starts to look up, you have to look up and locate the football. Otherwise, you're going to have penalties and you're going to give up the deep ball. Brad Svoboda in the game and moving and moving forward is McDougal. Inside the 15-yard line, 21 yards. Here's Jerry. 
I'm standing with a very proud McDougal family, Mike, Kathy, and Sean McDougal from Arvania. And Mike, you played here at Colorado State. You've seen your son have some great nights, but none better than tonight. Well, it's been a great night. Great night for him. He's, uh, he's got the longest run of his career, and he's uh, looks like it's going to be a good game. Great offensive line play, too. And Kathy, I'm told he got a lot of his toughness from his mom. He's played with a lot of injury this year. Well, I hope that's true. Um, you know, he's been a pretty stalwart ram this year, so we hope he keeps going for this rest of this game and one more game. And talk about another McDougal who may be coming this way. After the play, we'll talk to the youngest McDougal, younger brother Sean. And the 14, here goes big brother Kevin. Pounding off Air Force tacklers to the seven. Go ahead, Doc. Hey, Sean, how does it feel to know that your brother may be one of the toughest guys on the football field? He wears about a quarter of a mile of tape every night to play football. Uh, well, I don't like about that much tape, but I like him playing real tough and just... Are you as tough as he is? Sometimes I can be. <laughs> All right, 11-year-old Sean McDougal, one more coming down, probably headed to be a Ram in the future, guys. A very proud McDougal family. <laughs> Great story, Jerry. And... He's just a few yards away from 1,000 on the season. Three-yard carry will get McDougal over the 1,000-yard mark. There's an injured player on the field. That's why the delay right now. And, and it's Blaine Sapia. Lee, the outstanding offensive tackle, is shaken up. He's had such a good game. And you saw after the pass interference call, he was leading the charge down the field. An emotional leader as well as one of the best performers who's led the way tonight for McDougal. He's part of that senior class that every time we come here, Sonny Lubick talks so fondly about. It's a small group, but because of their work ethic, because of their toughness, I think that there's really a special bond there between the coaching staff and this senior class. They may, hopefully this team will make it to a bowl game for their sake, but if not, Sonny Lubick will remember this season, 1999, as a very special one to him. Because of Sapaia, the injured offensive lineman in McDougal, a small senior class of a dozen, McDougal looking at that thousand yard mark, but more concerned about his injured offensive lineman. Be back. There's Blaine Sapaia. Still in some pain. As he comes to the bench, Kevin McDougal, who's been delivering the blows more than half of his yards coming after contact tonight. Second and four. He's a couple of yards away from a thousand for the season. He'll get the thousand right here. Stopped at the five. To get there right on the nose. Remember one thing again, we've been keeping keep an update on this because this is impressive. Colorado State's been inside the red zone 24 times this year, scored 22, 18 touchdowns. This is why, because they can run the football effectively and then they can play action if necessary. That baby just keeps going up. I remember you brought that up in the first quarter. It just I, keeps going. The, the, chart, the chart just keeps moving up. That's very, very impressive. Yeah. And in fact, if I ever got back in coaching, I would have a rule. If you get inside the 15-yard line, no more of those old sissy field goals. Right. Either run the thing in or leave it there. But when Sebastian kicks them. No, they're long ones. They're, they're right. Yeah, it's the long ones. I'll give it. Sebastian is 13 for 13 inside the 40-yard line. That stuff for Saturday. That's the good stuff, man. Right? Florida State, 13 for 13. Aaron Green, a redshirt freshman in for Sapaia. McDougal picked up the first down and first and goal. Newton uh, has a man. Nick Schomburg couldn't get the touchdown. <laughs> he came very close. Boy, if Air Force ever needs to hold him here to a field goal, it's this series. After he comes off this fake, we, Lee just talked about the play action. Right here, he has Schaumburg all by himself. As a quarterback, you want to throw it right now. Turn the shoulders and throw the football. And he was unable to do that. He waited a little bit too long. Then he's throwing all the way against his body. He needed to turn right away, turn the shoulders, and deliver the ball on time. This is the time where you give it to McDougal, though, on second down. There he is. Right there. friends very happy his brother played here before his dad 
was a former CSU Ram and Sonny Lubick, who has a lot of respect for Kevin McDougal, tried very hard to recruit McDougal. There were three schools involved at the end. McDougal said he came very close to going to Air Force. Tonight, he's making them pay. McDougal is a big, strong guy, makes a good offensive line, but watch the thing I like most about him, Kurt. See that low center of gravity? He drops that shoulder, and he just keeps moving right there. Boy, I really like the way he drops that shoulder. I mean, we, we have a, a completely different appreciation for him running tonight with such authority. We knew that he was a tough back, but when he is healthy, he is a completely different looking back because of the way he's able to break tackles. And little man, he's excited. He knows it's another touchdown for Big Brother. That was a business-like one for Sean. That's, it's like, that's, hey, that's cool. Two that's yards. Cool. He only knocked down one guy on that play. That's okay. By the way, should mention, not only the red zone stat, this is the first time, you got to remember, Colorado State has had the ball in the second half. They held Air Force, forced the punt, and they, 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 they took 11 plays, 80 yards, 4 minutes, 22 seconds. Very impressive drive to start things off offensively for the, for the Rams. They've now scored 19 touchdowns uh -oh. and 25 times into the red zone. That's impressive. Forget those field goals. Forget them. Let's move ahead to further action. Sanders back in from the 14. Rashawn Sanders did not stay in bounds. Cannon fire, no. Band, no. We have him out of bounds at about the three. See. Yes, he did. As an official standing out of bounds there at the three-yard line, it was pointing to the ground. Nobody put up their arms, but it was a touchdown. Oh, well. My apologies, Rashawn. <laughs> Extra points good. It's 34-6. Tight end number 80, Nick Schaumburg, does a good job of sealing this, allowing a running lane for the running back, Rashawn Sanders. Good change of pace here. Look at the block by number 17, Leon Smith. The quickness of Sanders combined with the tough running of Kevin McDougal gives the Rams really a nice one-two punch. Are you guys ready? 26 times in the red zone, 24 scores, 20 touchdowns. Very, very impressive. I guess when the touchdowns get that easy, the officials don't bother to put their arms up. <laughs> uh, it's a great running night for this team. I'll tell you one thing, Kirk. You and I were there when BYU clobbered his football team. I'd love to see BYU play Colorado State now. Yeah. That would be a football game. Sure would. With Kevin McDougal running the football. Ooh. He didn't even play in that game. And the other thing, Matt Newton playing now with oh, confidence. Much better. You know, and the offensive line coming together. Scotty McKay and Leotis Palmer will just watch that one go through. It's a touchback. Thanksgiving night. We hope to see you from Starkville, Mississippi. The Rebels and the Bulldogs. Last year was a very exciting game on Thanksgiving night. They'll renew the rivalry, the battle for the Golden Egg, starting with a Thanksgiving edition of Thursday Game Night presented by Gateway at 7.30 Eastern. Both teams have huge games coming up this week. Mike, I'm going to take you to Little Dewey's. You're going to have a good time there. In Starkville? Yeah. Oh, yeah. You can't go to Dewey's. you got to have Dewey's. turkey. Little Dewey's. One it's of Thanksgiving. The days, one of the days we're going to have Little Dewey's. Oh, you can't. Thiessen lost the snap, fumbled the football. It's battled for in Colorado State. Has recovered. You guys are going to have plenty of time in the fourth quarter to make plans for us. Ula Tuatelli. Injured earlier back in the game and comes up with the turnover. You see there, the, the center is trying to stretch there on a on a scoop block, and quarterback Mike Thiessen never got his hands on the ball, and clearly Colorado State picks it up. This is the time of the year where you start talking about bull teams, teams that should be eligible, things of that nature. We travel around the country. We see a lot of college football. We see a lot of teams. How many bulls are there now, Mike? Uh, 40, 44 teams, I think, get into bowls now, so it's 22. Big 
Dougal a run? Keep going. You think, you think we could somehow find a way to find Colorado State to sneak them into one of these bowl games? This team, <laughs> this team, the way they're playing right now, without a doubt, deserves to go to some type of bowl game. Well, the problem becomes to avoid that whole fiasco of bowl deals getting done, conferences of about five, six years ago started doing the deals to their third team, their fourth team. Here's the Mountain West standings. As you see, everybody has two losses in that two spot. BYU at the top spot of five and one. If BYU beats Utah on Saturday, BYU will win the conference. And then we're battling for second place with a couple of losses. Newton throws to Red Stock, who has one touchdown tonight. Did he get a second? Yeah, great play. Touchdown, CSU. Goodness. Talk about a guy that has a lot of heart. This is one of the favorite plays that Colorado State runs. Pete Rebstock, number four, 5'9", 180, and he's going to stretch it out to try. Look at the effort there to get the ball into the end zone. Nice job by the little wide receiver. That's all. Sapahi out there again. Yeah, always out there. Now. Number 61, that's his play. expected this. Keep your eyes on number 61, the right tackle, Blaine Sapahia. There he is. He comes out at 310 pounds and cleans up the secondary. You'll see him right there. Now, keep your eye on him right there. Makes a good block, good running. Notice the nice feet. I tell you what, I'm not so sure that that kid can't play in the next level with those feet. Hi, I'm Kenny Main along with Dan Patrick. This is very important. The Air Force Falcons taking on the Colorado State Rams. Winner keeps bowl hopes alive. Due to time constraints, we must move ahead to further action. With Kevin McDougal. That's the storyline tonight. Air Force hasn't been able to get much done on offense. Colorado State scored touchdowns on its last five possessions, and this man's been the star. Led by his offensive lineman on senior night, Sapaia. After the timeout, his first and ten. Anytime you guys want to stop playing La Bamba in the stadium, you're welcome. Kale Bonds to the 23-yard line. You know, what like are you doing? Like there's, a, there's a whole band here. We're playing top 40 songs. You know, this Kale Bonds story is pretty interesting. He and Matt Newton, they went to the same high school. Newton, in 94, the Colorado State quarterback, led Englewood to the state title. Bonds played quarterback in 95 and followed what Newton did, leading his team to the state title as a quarterback. They had hoped that this would be a head-to-head -head between the two. Bonds takes it down to the 10-yard line. We're talking big high school titles, too. 5A state titles here. A state where they play some good football, Colorado. Newton, who has become the starter, has had very good numbers throughout the year in terms of passing, but they've really improved the last few games. And you still saw them tonight with his strong arm. Bonds was the starter coming into the season, but lost the job because of injury. Fighting at the goal line for the touchdown, and they got it. Well, Fisher DeBerry's team shows a little heart, comes back down the field, and Kale Bonds, who just lost his starting job this week, leads a touchdown drive that Jeremy Laster finished off. Laster makes a good effort right here. Make it, now watch this. I love the way he drops his shoulder at the very end. Boom, right there. That looks like Kevin McDougal only in the white jersey. He keeps fighting. Get in there, young man. Good. Going to be 41-13. They're coming. Now, now we go. Those who traveled down from the Air Force Academy in Colorado Springs, technically traveled up since it's south of here, haven't had many push-ups to do or reasons to cheer, but now it's 41-13. Lester's fifth touchdown run of the year. Weaverville, North Carolina, the seniors' home. Sports Center's coming up right after we're done with Rich Eisen and Dan Patrick. The American League MVP story, Drew Bledsoe and the Patriots. Lost to the Jets on Monday night, looking to bounce back in Miami this weekend.
and the ESPN.com question of the night, which we understand is related to college football rivalries. I guess you just log on to ESPN.com, part of the Go Network, Go.com, and find out what the question is there. Rivalry weekend is so special in college football, and this has developed into a great one because of the comebacks that have happened, the last-minute finishes, and the fact that there's only a couple of hours separating these schools, and they're kind of on a very competitive level, and their ascent in college football in the 90s has paralleled each other. They've well, both been good teams in the late half of the 90s. That and the fact that the games have been very competitive. You know, the Colorado State Rams have had some, some success, and Air Force has been able to come back over the last couple of years and have some success. And the way the games have come down in the last few minutes, I think, always inspires a little bit more in these rivalries. David Adams kicking off. Remember, Air Force is going into the win, which has lessened a little bit tonight as we've gone on. Rashawn Sanders' kick return went out to the 25-yard line. Well, Kirk, you brought it up earlier, and I didn't want to get away from the point of the Mountain West Conference and bowl bids. Talk to Craig Thompson, the commissioner of this conference. They've locked down the Liberty Bowl for their champion and a Las Vegas Bowl bid for the second team. The problem is the Las Vegas Bowl will have the opportunity to choose among those second-place teams as we go on here. And with Air Force not winning here tonight, it looks like Utah, Colorado State, Wyoming's impressive play certainly opened some eyes. But if BYU wins the conference, those are the teams that will be in the mix for the second bowl game out of this league. Sometimes I think people around the country get confused, whether it's the, uh, the, the Liberty Bowl or, or Las Vegas Bowl or the Citrus Bowl, no matter which bowl, when you hear uh, Mountain West 2, you hear right. Big Ten 2, they just assume, well, let's go to the standings and, okay, who finished in second place? That team is going to be going to that prospective bowl. That's not true. It's up to the bowl who sits uh, at number 2, 3, or 4 to make that selection from that conference. And a lot of times it doesn't necessarily come down to who has the best team comes down to who's going to turn on the TV and who's going to bring people to fill up their stadium. And in a case like that, that sometimes comes back to haunt a Colorado State. Timeout call here by CSU. Jerry Punch. And you're talking about the bowl situation. It all comes down to how many tickets they sell and how many hotel rooms they're going to use. That's why Colorado State this past week decided to put up their own website called csurams.com to see exactly what would happen. They'll do a survey. How many people would come to a bowl game? How many hotel rooms would you use? And in seven days, as of about 4.30 this afternoon here at Fort Collins, they had 2,300 responses and a pledge of over 6,100 tickets. They don't even have a bowl bid yet. It's in their website survey, over 6,000 tickets promised thus far. Let's get that guy. The big fellow come. Yeah. I guarantee that. He's coming. He's let's getting get, his tickets. Let's get that guy on the uh, floors of the casinos in Vegas. He'll certainly... <laughs> Got Oil the Ram Rams hat going. There it is. He's got the reverse of the mustache, the handlebar. He's got the reverse Rams. I tell you, I wish we had college game day so I could put that thing on. <laughs> Would that be cute or what? <laughs> Second and five coming up. Credit the Colorado State Administration for trying to show the Las Vegas Bowl folks that we can do it. Get people there. Dwayne Ruff is the carry man now to the 36-yard line. Part of the problem is Utah can drive about six hours. The feeling is that Utah may bring a lot of fans, and that's one of the things that CSU is trying to fight right now. Exactly right. And, and one of the things you could right away jump to conclusions and, and, and come down on the Bulls and say that's not fair that the Bulls do this, but if you're the Citrus Bowl or you're the Las Vegas Bowl, you, 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 you can understand why they're doing this. They want to bring people to their game. They want to sell and, hotel rooms. Exactly. So, I mean, it's it's the, the system and the way it's set up, you cannot come down on the Bulls to the Bulls games because they have to do that. We should point out, for argument's sake, Colorado State did defeat Utah this year. 31-24 was the score. Rough carries. The rushing yards continue to pile up for Colorado State tonight. 15 yards there. Another first down for CSU, and it'll take us to the fourth quarter where we can discuss, among other things, the bowl system and the BCS. Right. And what may lie ahead for Virginia Tech, even if they do win out. Yeah, that's what I'm talking about. A lot of issues to be discussed ahead. 
And a fourth quarter as well. It's been a night for the McDougal family. Well, Sean has seen his big brother on his final game at Hughes Stadium. Dominate the game. 66 yard run equal the long of his career. Powering over Air Force tacklers and a touchdown pass as well. All part of a 41 13 lead as we head to the final 15 minutes. Here is C.W. Hurst from Sherman, Texas, 9 of 12 in the field goal department coming into the night. Officially 27 yards and it's blocked. He's got a couple blocked this year. Nice job defensively by Corey Nelson, the junior. Sports Center is coming up next with the timeout here in Fort Collins. UNLV next Saturday. ESPN's first and ten is presented by AMD Athlon Processor. Colorado State hopes it has two games coming up in Las Vegas. They'd like to play in the Las Vegas Bowl. Be the second selection of Mountain West Conference Bowl eligible teams. Scott Becker with that pass reception. You know, the Mountain West folks will be very interested in what happens in the ACC of all places this week. That's how this bizarre bowl situation gets. Because the ACC has only qualified three teams and has five bowl eligible spots. Clemson, South Carolina, North Carolina State, East Carolina, Maryland, Virginia, Wake Forest, Georgia Tech games have an impact on what happens for this league and its bowl hopes. Bonds trying to keep the drive alive. Got over that first and ten line to move the chains. Just for explanation again, Florida State, Georgia Tech, and Virginia have all qualified for bowls. They are bowl eligible. There are two more spots, the Micron PC Bowl and the Aloha Bowl, that ACC teams are contracted for. Say Clemson doesn't win, they won't have enough wins to go to a bowl game. Same true with NC State, Maryland, and Wake Forest. So if two of those four teams don't want to say one of those four teams win, it's another spot that's available. Oh, no, no, no. Bond's pass is intercepted by Eric Goldson. And the senior will go down his fifth pick of the year. So assuming one of those teams lose, that opens up an at-large berth in those bowl games. It would have to be three of the teams losing. Okay, or three. And now the ACC cannot can fill all its contracted spots. They become at-large at that point? Well, it's up to the bowl. The dealing starts. There's nobody to film with the ACC, so now you have to start making deals. The Big Ten, the SEC, the Big 12 have all filled their spots. The Big East still has a spot to fill. Remember, Miami has three games left. They have to win two of them. They play Rutgers, Syracuse, Temple. So they should win two of those games, thus making themselves bowl eligible. So the big weekend is the ACC this weekend to see if they don't fill up all their spots. The quarterback in the game for Colorado State, it is Steve Cutlip, the redshirt freshman. Cutlip just hands off on first down. Four yard or so. Missed most of the preseason with a sore tendon in his throwing arm. Very touted freshman, a big signee for Sonny Lubick's program. Get a look at Steve Cutler. It's a quarterback name. Got that quarterback jaw too there, coach. Freshman. Second and 12 from the 18. The toss to Cecil Sapp. Oh. Seeing some action and he's popped out of bounds. The E-Trade players of the game tonight, Mike Thiessen, on a night a few stars for Air Force. Thiessen ran the ball effectively in the first half. And Kevin McDougal, who ends up with his second career 200 rushing yard game. Touchdown and the touchdown toss as well. Some, that sums up Kevin McDougal. Hear him talking about his offensive line. Every time we sit down and talk with him, he always wants to talk about other players. Newton, the offensive line, Deshaun Sanders. Always wants to point out his teammates. Jason Stout, 
ran there. Fisher DeBerry tight, trying to keep his defense in, but McDougal did the damage. In our pregame show, we discussed how I would try to beat Colorado State. I said, first thing you got to do is stop number 36, McDougal. Kirk, as you brought up a good point, he missed a lot of breakthroughs. He does a great runner, but as more he's running, the better that they throw the ball. Watch his strength. Changes the hand. He does everything really terrific. And the good thing about him, Kirk, is this is the first time we've been able to see him yeah. as a healthy football player. And he is a team player, and, and it's his the ability to cut back against the grain and break the tackle. That's what makes him such a special runner. Well, they've got his kick blocked, and Air Force will score. It was Kirk Duffy cleaning it up to get it to 41-19. First punt block for the year on Horenic, and it was a not the best snap in the world. Chris Wade got in there quickly to give Air Force an opportunity to score. As you might at Hughes Stadium, Fort Collins, Colorado, Mountain West battle the Air Force Falcons taking on the Colorado State Rams. Winner keeps bowl hopes alive. Due to time constraints, we must move ahead to further action. Quite a night for Kevin McDougal, who will find himself with after 200 yards tonight. Just about 61 yards shy of his all-time best season. 20-point game, 30 seconds left. We're rolling out and throwing on fourth down. Well, the seniors proved that they have made a great impact on this program. And Sonny Lubick talked about it at length. Guys like Hagens, Dougals, and Clarks on the all-time sack list number one. But what he's done on the field tonight wasn't about sacks. It was about stopping the run and assignment football. And just another example of why this senior class is so special at CSU. It was interesting to see him and, and the plays he was able to make. But to me, sitting down and, and talking to these seniors and talking to the coaches, it's a special group for more reasons than just playing the game. It has a lot to do with the character of these players. Sonny Lubbock's done a great job here because let me tell you something. This place is hurt for facilities in some ways. They finally got a nice little coaches area. Mm -hmm. They need practice area. They need to do something with this stadium to get a little bit more capacity if they're going to take the step to the next level, which is the BYU level with that 60,000 seat stadium. Well, Sonny's been the man in this league, no question about it, in the month of November. This will be another November victory. And Sonny Lubick will increase his record. You know, we keep talking about this senior class and, and you, you need to talk about it because a coach cannot coach chemistry. That's that's there's not a there's not a, a pill for that. You can only hope that a team will come together, and they don't have an undefeated record this year. But the team cares about this program, and that has a tendency to carry on down to the juniors and the sophomores, and that that's something that can really help a program in the long run. Bonds pass is caught by Farmer. He picked up the first down. He'll probably get another snap or two here before Sports Center. With Dan and Rich, they'll be looking ahead at rivalry weekend as well. There's everything else that's happened in sports here today. And that guy has been a real, Fisher DeBerry has been a real gem of the coaching profession. He does it with class and dignity. He was a, a president of the American Football Coaches Association on a board of trustees. He's won more football games than any man in the history of college football and academy. You can't say anything more about a guy like Fisher DeBerry. His team will close out at New Mexico a week from Saturday. And Colorado State will watch with great interest because if Utah beats BYU, still the opportunity for a four-way tie in the Mountain West, and Colorado State could have a share of the title. One more point about Fisher DeBerry. Mm -hmm. You guys met with him, and I think I don't remember. Did he say he won 11 Commander in Chiefs Correct. trophies? Correct. Yo. That's the yo of the week. That's the yo. We almost didn't get the yo stat of the week. Let me in. tell you, that beat Army and Navy, right? And winning that trophy. That's great. That's great. They did it again this year. Beat both. Out of bounds with a chance to score. Ryan Fleming got out of bounds before the clock got to double zero. Never say die from the cadets. That's impressive. It really is. It really is. The nine yard line. Final three seconds, thus the final play of the game. In all likelihood, Sonny Lubick with a cold Gatorade bath from his seniors, who Sonny could not say enough about. Bonds has done a very nice job throwing the ball. 8 of 13 for 156 yards. And a little confusion here at the end of the game. 
Rebstock got the night going. A great adjustment to a pass catch for a touchdown. You can see how much his players like Sonny Lubick. It'd be very interesting if they go eight and three. I mean, you can't figure out the whole bowl picture for everybody. Somebody always has a complaint, but if they go eight and three with a win over Colorado, a dominant win over Colorado. Final play. Incomplete. And it's over. A rivalry game goes to Colorado State. They beat Air Force 41-21 on senior night. The seniors at CSU reign supreme with Doc, Lee, Kirk, Mike, Sports Center, next.